Ok, passiamo avanti. Io invito sul palco il prossimo rappresentante dei coorganizzatori che è Jacopo Nardiello di SIGAP. Ciao Jacopo, ben arrivato. Ciao Chiara. Eccoci. Ciao, ciao. Uh, Jacopo, ti sei presentato ieri ma ti chiedo di raccontare anche oggi a chi ci sta ascoltando oggi, dato che abbiamo tante tante persone nuove, ci racconti brevemente chi sei e poi ti lascio invitare il prossimo speaker sul palco. Awesome, grazie mille Chiara. Allora va bene, io sono Jacopo Nardiello, sono uno dei CNCF ambassador italiani e insomma lavoro nel contesto CNCF Kubernetes da, da qualche anno e sono il founder di, di SIGAP. Eh, senza stare a perdere tempo su di me che è la parte poco interessante, uh, passo in inglese così possiamo introdurre il prossimo, il prossimo speaker. So it's, it's absolutely great. Uh, the next speaker is going to be Alexander Roman. He is a Tanzu Senior Solution Engineer at VMware and his talk about Knative, I'm sure it's going to be super interesting. So, Alexander, your sta stage is yours and please, we are so, okay. so happy to have you. Bye. Yeah, great, Good luck. great, great to be here uh, to attend the uh, KCD ATD event. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Alexandre Roman. So, I am uh, a solution engineer working at VMware Tanzu. And uh, in this talk, we are going to talk about Knative. So um, for those of you who don't know about Knative, uh, there was a, um, an interesting tweet a few days ago from uh, Matt Moore, one of the uh, founders of um, uh, Knative. So uh, if you know nothing about Knative and how great it is for any application and not, such, and not only uh, serverless uh, functions, Uh, I think you might be interested in, uh, in this talk. So let's see why uh, Knative is great for your Kubernetes application. So a few reminders before we start. Um, when you want to deploy your application to Kubernetes, what do you need? You need to, to have some pods. Um, the pod is responsible for running your uh, containers uh, in, your, in, uh, in your cluster. Uh, actually, you don't uh, have to deal with pod. Uh, you would uh, create some uh, deployment. Uh, which will manage uh, uh, pod instances and will, um, is responsible for uh, launching as much replicas that you, that you need. And uh, you would then you need to expose and to create some Kubernetes service so that you can uh, select and uh, use the pods uh, that you want to access uh, if you have uh, your, your application. But at this point, the, the, the application is not available outside of, the, outside of the cluster. So that's why you need to either use some load balancer. So the idea is to uh, create uh, this object so that you can uh, get to your application uh, from outside the cluster. Or maybe you, you might want to use some ingress controller and create a route uh, uh, so that you can use the application from outside the cluster. So, Most of you already knows about that. Uh, you know that uh, there is, this is a lot of files. Uh, this is a lot of YAML that you, you need to, to write in order to deploy your application. And I think everyone can agree on the fact that this is too much YAML. Uh, Kubernetes was um, created uh, for operators uh, as a way to, you know, uh, having uh, a, a great abstraction layer over the infrastructure. So it's great to, uh, consume CPU, uh, network storage uh, resources. But when it comes to deploying applications, you know that there is a lot of work that you need to do as a developer until you have your application running uh, on, on your cluster. And as a developer, we know that what the developer really wants, they, yeah, they want to have fun, right? But this, this also, they want to, to write code. Uh, this is Uh, what they want to do. Uh, they want to write code. And I think we can all agree on that, right? Writing infrastructure code, such as YAML files, the load balancer, the ingress, is, it's not fun as a developer. And you can imagine that if you have a lot of applications, you have a lot of YAML files that you need to write that you need also to maintain. Um, because uh, this is a lot of files uh, that you do need to uh, Uh, to deal with uh, as soon as you want to deploy your application to Kubernetes. Fortunately, uh, there is this thing, uh, Knative. Knative is a, a Kubernetes framework. Um, you may know about Knative. Uh, it is famous for uh, serverless uh, to run uh, functions as a service. 
And, uh, but it, it is much more than that. And we see in this talk how you can leverage Knative uh, for uh, a lot of uh, applications, not just serverless ones. And a few days ago, uh, there, there, is, um, there was this uh, joint announcement uh, from IBM, VMware, and Google. Um, Knative uh, went GA with uh, this uh, 1.0 version. So it is now a product uh, which is ready for prime time. Uh, that you, you may want to use for your next application on, on Kubernetes. So how great Knative is for your application? So let's have um, a look at this uh, definition. Yeah, that's right. If you want to deploy some application to Kubernetes, you can have this YAML file. You know that uh, it fits in a slide, so that's good news for everyone such uh, uh, who are afraid of uh, writing too many uh, YAML files. Uh, that's all you need. That's all you need to uh, get an application running on Kubernetes. And what you get as a result, uh, you get pods, of course, running in your cluster. These clusters, um, these uh, pods uh, would be managed by a deployment and a replica set. So at this point, it is no different than a regular Kubernetes application. You have pods, replica set, and pods uh, running in your cluster. What you get for free is horizontal pod auto scaling. Uh, Knative, and we will see uh, that in a moment. Uh, you, get, uh, you can create uh, new instances for your pods uh, using, uh, using Knative. And what's great also with Knative is as soon as you start uh, using this uh, definition with your cluster for your application, then you can access, uh, you can get uh, a new URL uh, to uh, connect to your application, and you don't have to deal with ingress, with service. Everything is managed by uh, Knative. Uh, and I think it's really uh, great to have that. If you compare this um, way of doing things uh, with the legacy way, uh, on the left, you see uh, everything that you have to write in order to deploy your, an application, get some pods with the deployment. Then you have to, to write some service and ingress. You may want to use uh, uh, auto-scaling with horizontal pod auto-scaler. You know that you, you can see here in less than 10 lines of YAMLs, you have the same result, and it is way much better to maintain and to create at, uh, for, your, for your application. So uh, let's, uh, let's have a look. Uh, I have uh, this uh, definition here. So uh, you just have to uh, push uh, this uh, file to your cluster. And as soon as you do that, uh, you, you would get a Knative service created uh, in your cluster. So if you uh, use the Knative CLI, you'll see that I have an application. I have a Knative service with uh, some uh, URL. I can go further and uh, show uh, additional details about my application. So I, I know that my application is ready. I can uh, access. Um, I can get the, the uh, URL. So let's do that. And as soon as I am using the, that endpoint, a new pod uh, would be created for my application. Here you see, uh, it is a Spring Boot application. Here you see the pods uh, running on my cluster uh, just uh, 10 seconds ago. So if you go deep, if you go further, you see that uh, it is just uh, a regular pod running in my cluster. Wait a minute. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this application is ready for, uh, you know, uh, you can access this application anywhere uh, using the, uh, the URL. Uh, we are running a live demo. So, okay, uh, you, you may want to access this application. So let's have a look at the, at the logs. Uh, you see, it is a regular Spring Boot application. I'm not using uh, functions. Uh, framework. I'm not using uh, uh, any fancy framework. It is just uh, the, the regular Spring Boot uh, framework that you may want to use for your application. Of course, you may want to use any framework uh, as soon as your application uh, is uh, stateless uh, using HTTP. Uh, you see the application started on the on my cluster and around around the three three seconds to 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 get to the to the application running up and running on my cluster. And uh, at some point, the, the pods uh, would be uh, destroyed. So yeah, we can see the pod is uh, um, about to be terminated. 
uh, by Knative uh, because I am not using the application. There is no traffic. So the application is about to be uh, destroyed. Uh, this way, I am not consuming resources on my cluster. And I got this for free, as you can see. And I don't have to, to write a lot of uh, YAML files to, in order to get uh, that result. So uh, let's go uh, deep uh, into the Knative features. And then we will run uh, uh, two demos uh, that will show you how to use this feature for real. So, we have just uh, we just saw the auto scaling feature available in Knative. So I think I believe that everyone understand what we are talking about when we talk about auto scaling. Uh, when you have requests uh, for your application, Knative would be responsible for starting as many pods as um, required in order to you know uh, get the uh, the job done. And uh, when there is no traffic. And we saw that uh, Kennedy was able to destroy the uh, remaining pods so, such, so that you don't uh, consume resources if you are not using the application. And as soon as you have a new uh, request coming, then an, the uh, Kennedy serving uh, component would take uh, care of this uh, request and would recreate the, the pods um, so that you can uh, have an application running. You can also have uh, some uh, advanced rollout support. Uh, it is a neat feature that you may want to use. Uh, let's say you have uh, V1 and V2 uh, using Knative and Knative only. You don't need to install uh, Istio or any other framework. Uh, you can uh, then uh, send the traffic uh, between the uh, two versions of your application. So let's say you want to send uh, most of the traffic on the V1 uh, version of your application, you can set up a route with Knative uh, so that you, you send uh, some part of the traffic with the, to, the, to the new application with uh, this uh, advanced rollout support. There is also uh, some, um, uh, there is a great eventing model available in Knative. So the idea is to connect uh, part of your uh, system, part of your IT, with uh, these Knative services so that uh, as soon as you have some event uh, which is fired in your system, then the uh, Knative service uh, would be triggered and uh, would be would handle this, uh, this event. It is quite handy um, if you want to, you know, uh, leverage some um, external uh, services um, such as uh, GitHub or, or S3. So let's say you have a new issue created on GitHub. It could be uh, a new event that your Knative service uh, could uh, uh, manage, could handle. Uh, let's say you, you create a new file in some S3 bucket. Uh, you, could, um, you could take this file and uh, this a pod, a Knative service, would be then responsible for uh, you know, reading the file and do things with this, uh, with this file. And the nice thing with this uh, eventing model, uh, you can also uh, get you also get integration with uh, message brokers. So if you, in case you have uh, Kafka or RabbitMQ, then you can build a complex uh, eventing uh, model, uh, and you can integrate with existing queues and uh, existing um, event uh, eventing architecture uh, in your system. So. This is, you can do a lot of things with Knative. So let's see what we can do uh, for real with uh, live uh, demos. So uh, first of all, I am, um, I'm gonna show you an existing application. So uh, my application is, you know, nothing, uh, uh, nothing fancy. Uh, I have a to-do application. So this application is made of two components. You have a front-end um, container with view.js. And we have a backend uh, built with Spring Boot. Uh, this application is using, um, you know, regular um, Kubernetes definition. So if we go to the uh, deployment, you see the deployment. You, you see here the front end with the liveness prod, the readiness prod. You have the, the same information for the backend, a few configuration in order to connect to my database. This is something that you already know. Uh, and it is running on my application on my cluster. So let's say hello, and I I have uh, created a new entry in the database using the using the backend. So nothing fancy here. 
let's see how we can convert this application, this deployment to a Knative uh, service so that we can leverage the auto-scaling feature available uh, in, uh, in Knative. So I have this, uh, this application, uh, the name is Knative to do uh, application. Uh, the idea is to copy past, really copy past the part of your deployment that you need. And I need some image for my front end. I need some, uh, I need the image for my back end. I need a few configuration details. This is, these are the same configuration entries that I am using uh, with the Kubernetes um, application. The all the uh, all the other configuration files are not uh, required. I don't need to deal with ingress. I don't have to deal with services. Everything is managed by Kubernetes and Knative, so that I have my uh, I have my application running. Uh, so this is the regular application. You see one pod for the back end, one pod for the for the front end. Let's switch to the Knative uh, version of this application. And uh, in this case. Uh, you see that uh, we only have uh, the database running in my application, and I I, I have converted the existing deep Kubernetes files to Knative services. So you have the front end and the back end, which are now uh, uh, Knative services. So let's see uh, what happens as soon as you start uh, using this application. So here you have the application uh, available. If I hit refresh, then you see a new front-end container is created. And since the front-end is uh, using some API to connect to the back-end, then you see a new instance for the back-end. So I can create and say, hello, PCD. Okay, everything is managed uh, by the back-end, all right? And as soon as I stop using the uh, Kubernetes, uh, the application, then the pods would be destroyed as we saw uh, previously. Uh, so now uh, let's see what happens if we uh, start uh, to, um, um, to if, we see, if we send uh, some uh, traffic. So I have uh, this uh, this script. I'm about to uh, send a lot of traffic to my application. I, I want to 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 see uh, what happens with Knative. So I'm about to start this script, and as you can see, uh, new pods uh, will be created. Uh, as as uh, required for my uh, my application. Hopefully, it should it should start. Um, in the meantime, uh, we should see new pods created by uh, Knative services. Okay, and uh, these uh, these pods are automatically uh, managed by Knative. Uh, I don't have to make any modification to my existing Knative services. So in the in the in the real life, maybe you want. To to tune the um, uh, configuration of for auto scaling, you may not, not want to create too many instances. So that's why you see this annotation uh, available in the Knative service. Uh, and uh, it, this is something that you may want to use uh, to, uh, you know, uh, put some constraints on the on the Knative uh, service. And if we go to the logs of my application, let's see. Okay. Uh, so this is the same application made with uh, Spring Boot. And if we look at the uh, starting, you see this application was created in a matter of milliseconds. Uh, why? Uh, that's because uh, in this version of my Knative application, I am using a GraalVM uh, with native image support. So that's why my pods uh, for my backend uh, would, really, would start really fast. But you are you don't have to to uh, to use uh, this uh, GraalVM um, feature with Spring Boot. You may want to use the 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 regular uh, you know Java uh, framework runtime uh, to to start your your application. It would uh, work the same with uh, with Knative. So it is a way to showcase the you know the differences between uh, Knative and Kubernetes. And as you can see, there is uh, much less files, uh, much less YAML that you need to write in order to, to run your application. So back, uh, to the, back to the demo, I have another fencing demo and I want to show you. Uh, so this one is about uh, eventing. Uh, with Knative, you can build uh, uh, great um, event-based applications. 
uh, in this case, I have an application which is uh, using uh, machine learning. And um, so that we, if you put some image in some S3 bucket uh, as a PNG uh, file, uh, this um, this installation would listen to the to the event uh, coming from uh, AWS S3. Then at this point, uh, this event would trigger the creation of a TensorFlow uh, server, uh, which is responsible for you know running the machine learning stuff that we need uh, in order to recognize the uh, car uh, plates uh, in this image, and as a result. Uh, these, uh, these plates, if they have been um, uh, read uh, successfully, uh, you see the result in some uh, Google Sheet uh, document that I have uh, here. So the idea now is to uh, connect uh, to the S3 bucket. I have a few PNG files. So the idea is to uh, put these files to the S3 bucket. And as soon as uh, this file these files are loaded in the bucket. So I need to upload the file, all right? And in the meantime, we are going to switch to the right uh, Kubernetes namespaces. So you see a new uh, name, a new pod uh, is created for in order to um, uh, manage uh, the event. And um, in uh, a few seconds, as soon as the plate uh, is read by the TensorFlow and the machine learning stuff running in my cluster, you see, uh, and it, it can be quite, uh, you know, uh, resource uh, intensive. You know that running GPU, running uh, running machine learning may require some GPU, uh, may require a lot of CPU available in your cluster. So you don't want to run that stuff every you know uh, every day uh, always uh, and you see the result uh, as soon as you have the the plate uh, you see the image which has been successfully read and you can of course if we go back to s3 uh, you can uh, put uh, many more uh, plates and the system would uh, create as many pods as required in order to uh, read uh, these png files and you see that it is a great way to, uh, you know, connect existing parts of your um, infrastructure of the systems that you may want to use uh, in order to uh, leverage the um, the pods and the cognitive services available with this framework. All right. So in a few in a few seconds, uh, we are, we will see the the new results available in this uh, in this document. All right. So back to the presentations. We have uh, we saw some uh, great uh, use cases for Knative. So is uh, here is uh, my uh, my recap. Let's go to the next slide. So for your next application, maybe you want to use Knative. Um, if your application is stateless, remember that Knative will kill your pods. So if you have no traffic. Uh, let's say you have some user session stored in your application. If the pods is destroyed because there is no traffic, because there is no nobody using your website, then the pods would be destroyed by Knative and you may lose the user session if your application is not stateless. So make sure that you stored everything outside of your application and there are many solutions available uh, in order to implement uh, this uh, capability. Uh, you may want to rely on eventing. Uh, we saw that uh, you can leverage brokers such as Kafka, RabbitMQ, in order to connect a different part of your uh, infrastructure with uh, Knative services. Remember that Knative is a cross-platform serverless framework. So this means that you can deploy your functions as a service uh, on to any Kubernetes distributions. You may want to use Knative for your uh, Kubernetes running on-premises. You may want to use any cloud provider. Just um, everywhere you have, everywhere you have some Kubernetes clusters, you can use Knative. So we we saw in the presentation that you may want to use uh, also the proportional phase releases so that you can implement uh, features like A/B testing. 
And of course, uh, you can optimize the resources uh, with auto scaling. Uh, you, you would only consume the resources uh, which are required uh, for your application. As soon as you stop using the application, the, then the resources are freed. So this means that you may uh, use, um, you may deploy more application to your cluster because you have resources available when you don't use the uh, the application. And you know, one of the most important feature for me, last but not least, you want to write less YAML. That that could be a good reason, you know, to use Knative uh, as a way to write way less YAML files. Uh, you know, these days with Kubernetes, there is YAML everywhere. Any solution that uh, can allow me to uh, write less uh, YAML files uh, is awesome uh, to me. So uh, this is uh, this could be, you know, the uh, a killer feature for uh, for Knative. Okay. So as the conclusion, um, you may want to try and learn Knative. Uh, you may want to go to learn.tenzu.io. Uh, you will find free workshops uh, so that you can use Knative with live Kubernetes clusters. You, 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 you will see that uh, there is uh, some uh, tutorial step-by-step. Step. Uh, we, we are going to uh, show you how to use Knative uh, with your Kubernetes clusters. If you're looking for tips and tricks, uh, there is this uh, great uh, website available, knative.tips. And if we want to uh, go deep dive with the source code of my application, there is my GitHub. So feel free to uh, go to the, to the GitHub repo and see uh, how to uh, implement Knative for your application. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the chat or feel free to reach out to, um, to me uh, with my uh, Twitter handle. And thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone, uh, for attending this session. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. It was a great talk. Thank you, thank you for contributing. Uh, we have some time for questions. So let's start. Is it possible yeah. to use Knative on Kubernetes managed clusters? Yeah. Um, as I said, uh, as soon as you, you, the only prerequisite is uh, Kubernetes. So uh, no matter. If you have uh, Kubernetes, uh, if you are using, you know, AKS, uh, if you are using a GKE or any Kubernetes, any managed Kubernetes cluster, uh, you are free to deploy uh, Knative and use the auto scaling, for example, on with this cluster. Okay, there is another one. Uh, how does Knative compare to other framework for serverless? Okay, um, that's a great one. Um, there are some frameworks available out there uh, to, to implement uh, serverless. Um, the nice thing with uh, Knative um, is the fact that it is uh, a community project and which is backed by uh, some big companies uh, out there. So you, need, you see that uh, you have IBM, VMware, Google, and many, many companies um, uh, which are contributing to this uh, to this project, so it is quite mature. So every, of course, uh, this uh, project will uh, continue to evolve over the time. But uh, it is a safe bet um, if you want to use uh, Knative for your serverless uh, for your next serverless uh, application, and especially when you, you take into account the fact that you can deploy Knative everywhere uh, as soon as you have uh, a Kubernetes clusters available. Yeah. OK, thank you, Alex. We finished our time. So thank you very much for participating, for contributing to the KCD Italy. It was a pleasure yeah. to have you here. Yeah, great pleasure. Thanks for having me. Bye bye. Bye. Ok, torniamo all'italiano, uh, stiamo andando verso la fine della nostra mattinata, ci prendiamo un attimo di pausa, ci rivediamo qua alle 12.20 per l'ultimo talk. A tra poco.